What's going on, folks? Welcome back. Are you sick of overshooting corners? Are you tired of not being able to go riding with your friends if they're riding something moderately steep? Are you sick of squinting when you go riding so you don't get mud in your eyes? If any of these apply to you, head to 35bikes.com, enter promo code PODCAST, and you can get 20% off the entire range of products, which include brake pads from just $6.99 and mud guards from just $7.99. That's 35bikes.com, enter promo code PODCAST. Saks is the fastest growing underwear brand on planet Earth. In fact, it's probably the fastest growing underwear brand in the known universe. And ain't that a claim to fame, ladies and gentlemen? Ain't that a claim to fame? Each pair of Saks underwear features their patented ballpark pouch, which keeps your meat and two veg in a nice little hammock, stops it swinging around, getting caught up in things, which is a problem, as we all know. They are also anti-microdermal, and that basically means they don't stink, so your friends are going to want to hang out with you again. What's better than that? If you're interested in changing your life, changing your underwear game, changing everything, just head to saxunderwear.com, and you can find your local stockist right there. It's easy as that. All right, let's get on with this podcast. Hi, I'm Ollie Wilkins, and this is the Hook It Podcast. Hold tight, freshers. Okay. What's going on, podcast fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Hook It Podcast. This is episode number 43, and today we are joined by Bass Van Steenbergen, aka Steesbergen, which is going to be sick. Looking forward to a good conversation with Bass shortly. Uh, as usual, I always like to say a quick thank you to everyone for the support. Um, the podcast growing exponentially, big word for a Tuesday, but exponentially right now um and it's all credit to you guys for listening leaving feedback on itunes um soundcloud wherever you guys are reaching out as well it's much appreciated and thank you for doing it so competition winners we did a sax comp midweek if you don't follow us on instagram it's at the hook it podcast we gave away a few sets of sax underwear uh towards the back end of last week the winner for that i said i'd announce on this episode so the winner is at ride point five so hit us up buddy uh and we'll get some sax underwear on the way to you uh this month's gonna be epic we've got some insane guests lined up this month in february so you're gonna make sure you want to subscribe because there's gonna be something else dropping which only subscribers will be able to see so make sure you hit the subscribe button tell your friends to make sure you subscribe because you guys are wanna, gonna gonna want to check this out it's gonna be sick um and that's about it right Shout outs will be at the end too. New feature, shout outs. So make sure you listen right to the end of this conversation. And that's a wrap. No, it's not a wrap. We're just getting started. That's it though. Let's get on with this podcast and welcome Mr. Bass Van Steenbergen. Yeah. All right, man. We are recording. It's always weird that I can never get my head around that like pressing the button and then you have to start talking again it's weird <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so sorry um all right today's podcast guest is bass van steenbergen or steesbergen however you want to refer to the guy um and uh, yeah dude thanks a bunch for doing this it's, it's much appreciated yeah thank you and it's early too where you are in <laughs> yeah. new zealand woke up yeah. early to throw a podcast down man it's much appreciated yeah, no worries. Thank you. Hey. Stoked to be on here. No problem at all, man. No problem at all. So, um, so for the listeners, like, where are you right now in the world? Uh, I'm in Queenstown, New Zealand. Okay. I usually go here for the winter to do like my off-season training and just get a bunch of riding in. It's just a sweet place to be. Yeah, it seems like it. Like, man, there's so many people heading to New Zealand right now. Like, it seems it's almost like the new Whistler, almost, right? 
Yeah, yeah. There's such a big crew of people here. It's mm. pretty rad. I'm living with our dog and then my girlfriend, Vaya Verbeek, okay. and Werner Kerr is coming oh, to yeah. live with us in a week or so. So, wow. yeah, good crew, good crew. How much longer are you, are you having out there? Uh, I'll be here till like April 1st, like right after Crankworks Rotorua. Okay. And then cruise back home to nice. cruise back home to Kelowna. Nice. So where where are you based then? Like usually? Uh in Kelowna. BC. Kelowna and DC, okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. I don't really know the geography of Canada all that well. It's like yeah, Canada, Whistler, that's kinda of all I all I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah, how, how like far out are you from, from there? Five hours like northeast of Whistler. Okay. Right. It's right by Kamloops as well. Hmm. Oh sweet, dude. Uh so I'm guessing there's a, a pretty good crew of you guys back home as well for when you when you get back to ride with like who's yeah, the crew made yeah, out really. of, made up of? Yeah, so my brother is there obviously, yeah. and then Brett Reader is living out there now, which is sweet. And then we have the Ben and Braden Schleese house, which is really good right now. Right. And then Harrison Mendel rides a ton. Um, yeah, we have like a really good crew of people. It's mainly dirt jumping when I go home. Right. So all the like trail rides and downhill stuff i'm sometimes doing by myself but <laughs> still all good <laughs> Dirt, sweet. yeah uh have you got much downhill there too obviously you've got Kamloops, which is which is good for that stuff i think right like i said my geography with canada and, and what's where is terrible so apologies for that yeah no it's really good um we have two bike parks really close by now silver star and big white right. and then there's like lots of shuttle stuff around too so yeah it's really good sweet it's sick. sweet well, mm -hmm. I also always like to start these things off, kind of chat about growing up and stuff, right? So um, mm -hmm. did a little bit of, of research and sort of noticed that you've moved around quite a bit, right? <laughs> so Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and obviously your name, I guess, entails that you're not from, well, you know, originate from Canada. Is, is that correct? Or Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I was actually born in the US, but because my dad was studying there. So I was, I lived there for like four months, I think. Right. And then I grew up in Holland, which is where my family's from. Mm -hmm. And then when I was 16, I moved to Canada. So, okay. Yeah, if you don't got all three asking, passports is, now. You've got, okay. <laughs> Collecting those things. Um, yeah. <laughs> so what did, what was your, like, what was your family doing, which made you have to move around so much? Um, well, so my dad was, he was studying in the U.S., and then the plan was always to go back to Holland and like live back there. Yeah. Um, and then I think he from my family just kind of got tired of living in Holland and just wanted to change the scenery, really. Like yeah. it's pretty crowded there. And um, yeah, the weather is kind of shitty. And For sure. um, it was a cool place to grow up. But I'm pretty stoked that we moved to Canada. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah it worked out pretty good for you, dude. That's for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I would not be doing the same thing if I still lived in Holland. So, uh, what do you think yeah, you might be doing? Do you have any like idea? Or? I don't know. I was pretty into BMX racing when yeah. I was in Holland. Right. Um, but I don't know if I would have really kept that going. Like, I didn't really love it as much as I do love mm. downhill and stuff like that. So, I don't know. I'd probably be in school or something. That's like, interesting. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so did, you, <laughs> yeah. did you did you go to school? Like, did you finish school and stuff like that, or did you did you bail out um, to ride bikes like I, me? I just like well, I did. I finished high school in Holland, um, and then I actually had to go back to high school again in Canada for another two years. Right. Um, right. And then finished that, and then I did like a marketing course um, in college right. in uh in canada but i never finished that so <laughs> <laughs> i or i did like one year of it and then things just kind of got busy and it's like oh it's kind of tricky to do it all yeah. at the same time i mean I i'm sure i could but yeah and i feel like if, if you're going to be a pro mountain biker like marketing is going to be pretty helpful too because no doubt like a lot right. of that stuff now is is marketing yourself right and being able to yeah show the world what you're doing and keep up with the social stuff um, yeah yeah exactly but i guess the problem is like it it, it moves so fast like how god i don't know <laughs> like i said i didn't really go to university or college or anything like that you know I, I bailed out and went traveling rode to moto in 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 california and stuff like that but I, I can imagine that if you did a marketing sort of like course now it'd be outdated in 
a year, six months. Yeah, you know? for sure. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine. So like when, back when I did it, there was no like social media on there or anything. Right. So yeah, yeah, I would imagine those books would have to get updated like <laughs> <Crazy>. <laughs> every six months or so. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, all right. So growing up, obviously, in, uh, in Canada and stuff, um, is that where you sort of like found mountain biking or, or had you already been riding like mm-hmm. BMX and stuff while you were living in, in Europe? Yeah, when I grew up, I always kind of rode bikes. Um, my whole family kind of did. And everybody, or my grandpa raced uh, Speedway, and then my uncle raced some BMX and motocross. Right. Um, so I was kind of in the family, and I always rode bikes, but never really competitively. Mm-hmm. And then I think I was 11 or 12 when I got my first dirt bike, and we started racing a bit with that. And then we did that for like a couple of years and then I got into BMX mm-hmm. and then did that for a couple of years. And then when we moved to Canada, I got into, into more downhill riding and stuff. I like still raced a bit of BMX when I came to Canada, but yeah, I was kind of over it at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It was hard to like go to practices and stuff when you could go ride downhill that day as well. Or yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, the downhill stuff definitely took over pretty quick. Okay, I got you. I got you. It's weird because I was looking at your roots and rain actually. Like I, I stumbled upon that looking into oh, like, yeah. where you've been, what you've been doing, and we were at the same race like once. Uh, oh, really? So you, yeah, you must have raced in the UK once or twice, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've raced Fort William three times, and then this way I'm, back. yeah, four cross. I'm talking you were like oh, fifteen yeah, yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, that was so funny. I like. Yeah, we went to UK Bike Park, I think, for like this four cross race. That's right. And yeah. yeah, we were like still full on BMX kids and we like got these hardtails. And um, my brother and I and a friend went there. And it was like <laughs> the muddiest race of all time. <laughs> and like we had no idea about mud tires or anything. So I think we raced with like small block eights. And then I don't know, it like worked out pretty good, I think. He won his category and I got second or something. But yeah, yeah. I don't know how we made it out alive with those tires. <laughs> Dude, I remember that race actually. Now you said where it was because I, I I couldn't remember where I saw it. But you know, like when it's weird. Like I saw your name and then that place. I'm just like, what the hell? No, that must be a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> no, yeah, I was there. <laughs> That's crazy. I was. Yeah, uh, that... I'm gonna guess that I'm a little older than you actually. So I'm 31. Like your early 20s, right? Yeah, yeah. 23. Okay, yeah. To turn 24 a couple of weeks. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> don't worry, it's, it's 30. I think that's a strange one. That's a bit of a head fuck, if you ask me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I certainly certainly found that a little bit, and yeah, some friends did too, but I don't know, man. It is what it is. <laughs> Try not to think about it too much, eh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's crazy, man, to see that you, you were racing in the UK. Was that like in between going from Europe to Canada or? um that was like probably yeah the year before we moved um so we had like hardtails for a bit um and i don't know i was like kind of interested in the whole four cross thing because i was i don't know like motocross and bmx kind of like helped me get to mountain biking i guess yeah yeah um so yeah we just wanted to try it out it was pretty fun but it was also pretty <laughs> that race was pretty miserable with how many yeah i remember it now i didn't oh. this week i didn't do too many of those four cross races either i probably only did like four or five so it's pretty easy to pick out which one it could have been you know but when you yeah, yeah. when you said it was money i was like yeah that i remember now i remember that yeah. one. it's weird when you look back though man there's so many names on there that like yeah it's crazy it's, tr- it's a trip yeah it's, it's funny trip. i think like matt jones raced that one it did, too yeah and yeah sort of a bunch of kids that like we still ride with now it's pretty funny yeah, it is it is matt jones obviously just won farm jam as well for the i think like mm-hmm. the third year yeah he kills it at that event it's mm. crazy yeah, it's, yeah uh, really cool. the level has been stepped up that the red bull um video he put out not that long ago was insane that's so yeah great. not so to blow great. smoke up matt's ass on this thing but <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that was really good it's crazy good mm. so moving to canada i guess is that where you started to uh to take mountain biking a little bit more seriously would you say is that sort of like where you where you saw a bit more of a future in this stuff yeah yeah for sure like i never really thought 
two, like when I moved, it was still like, uh, well, I don't really know what to do for school or anything. So I was trying to figure that out. Yeah. And then, yeah, like, I guess we started racing and I was going pretty decent. And then, yeah, I don't know. It was like a slow transition, I guess. Like, right. like, oh, maybe we could like get some sponsors or whatever. And then, um, yeah, it slowly moved into like, oh, maybe this could be a job. Yeah. <laughs> like that, that still didn't really seem like a possibility until it was a reality, I guess. Yeah, so, makes sense. Um, yeah, no, it was like slowly kind of transition, transition into being more serious and, mm. um, yeah. I'm so stoked that it all worked out. Like I <laughs> still don't really know what I would be doing if that didn't happen. So, yeah. So, uh, obviously again, looking into the race results and stuff, I noticed you'd done a few world cups. Um, was, was sort of the race and stuff always your prime sort of like goal and objective was to, was to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Um, yeah, I race or I really wanted to race world cups for a while. Um, and I don't know, they were always like, maybe I just didn't do enough of them to like really get into it. But every yeah. time I would make it to finals, I would just crash. <laughs> so <laughs> I would just get way too excited and have like one good split time. And Yeah, I've said it. it like a million times on this podcast. But like for me, you know, I'm from uh, from racing motocross, which means you get, you know, three races, multiple laps. And, you know, I've done a, a few downhill races in my time and I could never, I, I still can't get my head around doing like one run. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah if I screw this one up, I'll, you know, just have another go later. And it's like, no, this is it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think a lot of people yeah, struggle with that, like gnarly. the pressure of it and stuff. And, and I don't know, like the whole, if you travel into the events and all that sort of stuff, the whole thing just compacts down into that one run, which is yeah crazy. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty gnarly, but mm. it's pretty cool at the same time. Like yeah. I, I do enjoy that kind of pressure, I guess, for some weird reason. Okay. Um, but it's definitely sweet to kind of branch out and do some different things now. Yeah. I think, uh, I think again, um, from what I saw, correct me if I'm wrong, but you qualified for the, for your first world cup in, in Norway, 2013. Yeah. Um, yeah. at that point then, what, who are you riding for? Did we, we sponsored per se and getting back in to go traveling and race? Yeah. I was riding for transition back then. Okay. I think that was like my first year in elite and I wasn't really like getting paid at that point or anything. Mm. I was like paying my own way to get there and all that. Um, and I think I went there with my dad actually, and he helped me out like working on my bike a little bit and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, that was such a fun race though. Like, yeah, I was pretty stoked that I made it into finals and then oh. I did crash in my finals. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. You made it in there, man. That's the, that's the thing, yeah. isn't it? I think you made it. Yeah. In there, that so. track was so good too. Like. I, if that track would be back on the, on the calendar, I'd for sure go. Like, really? That's my favorite track I've ever ridden. I think it was so good. Right. Okay. Yeah. So would you dip your toe back in then? Is that, would that be the plan if something like that cropped up? Yeah, I guess I would try. Cause I guess I don't think I have any UCI points anymore. Cause I like, I mean, I've raced crank works and stuff, but obviously you don't get points for slalom and all that. Mm. Um, so I'd have to get like a jersey, like a USA jersey or something. Um, but that'd be pretty sweet. Uh, I would, uh, I would definitely go back to that place. For sure. In fact, you've just you've just reminded me of something. So, are you technically American now? Because I've seen so, like, a bunch of stuff. Like your name, when it comes up, it's like sometimes Canada, sometimes it's yeah. uh, USA. Yeah. So for the UCI, um, I had a Dutch UCI code from racing BMX. And then I tried to go to Worlds when I was a junior, and Holland wasn't down to send anybody from or to Worlds okay. for downhill. Um, so I had to change it to US, and now I can't change it anymore. Like <laughs> you can only change it once, apparently. Okay, right. So yeah, now I'm. You can only I'm be one nationality. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so now I'm US. Right. Until the day I die for <laughs> for uh, America, for so yeah, America. <laughs> funny, funny. So uh, apart from that that race, is there any more which sort of stuck out? You know, from from your more amateur racing days. Um, yeah, I mean, I would always raced Port Angeles, and that was a lot of fun. Okay. Um, and then I think one big like one race that I was super stoked on was 
uh, Crankworks dual slalom like 2012 or something. Right. I was like, oh, I'll, I'll try and race pro. I was like still junior. And then I think I qualified third and ended up third or something. And I was wow. like super, Shit. I don't know. I just wasn't expecting it. So yeah. that was a really cool one. And I still take that one over some wins for sure. Really? That's crazy. Well, yeah. It was like such a cool feeling just not thinking that you'd be able to do it. And then somehow kind of pulling it off. It was pretty sweet. Mm. And was that like one of those moments then where you sort of think, right, there's there's a, a career to be made here and did it open up like new doors too to sponsors potentially and stuff like that? Yeah, maybe. Um, I don't know if that really, I guess, I don't know. I like never really thought that it was going to be a career even when I did do well. I don't know. It's weird. I like never, never really had that in mind too much. I think that's probably a good um, thing though, really. Like I think there's a, a lot of, kids that only focus on that like turning pro yeah sponsored. yeah so if you yeah, if you're not so thinking great. about it yeah it's gonna be you, you always see like the comments like oh how do i get sponsored but <laughs> i don't know like maybe i think it's different in europe too like nobody really gets sponsored there until you're like really good like yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. on at the bmx track in canada everybody had like all these sponsors on their jersey i was like damn all these kids must be so good but then <laughs> in holland players like such good racers and they just yeah didn't have any sponsors or anything so really? yeah, it was really funny to kind of compare those two worlds because i guess like the industries like all the big companies are a lot closer when you're in north america too so yeah yeah maybe yeah and i think it's it's probably just that whole uh i don't know whether it's just a bit would it be a bit cooler in the states to you know have sponsors on your jersey and all that sort of stuff and yeah i don't know yeah, I yeah it is kind of funny though I, yeah, I, I was uh, guilty of doing that as a youth too, just throwing throwing uh, <laughs> brand names all over your jersey just because <laughs> you got 10% off one somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I was pretty guilty of that a few times myself. <laughs> oh. Crazy. Um, all right, so that's cool, man. That's super interesting, though, that, about the whole uh, crankworks, you know, big turning point in your career maybe. Um one thing which is pretty interesting is obviously growing up with Tom. How, mm -hmm. I mean, this has to come off. I mean, like, what's it been like growing up with Tom? And is, is are you guys super competitive or is it chill? Yeah, we're like really? the most competitive people <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Yeah, we like, oh, yeah, that was always like so good because it was really funny actually. When he was a lot younger, he would never want to go ride and I would have to like force him to come riding with me and he'd hate it and like, I just like pretty much wanted somebody to ride with and right. he was just knocked down. What um, was he doing? Uh, he was like playing video games and stuff. So, okay. um, yeah. And then it kind of turned around to where he was like super stoked on riding. And then he raced downhill for a while and we were like doing the same series and, um, yeah, it was always super competitive. It was, it was really fun, but very, very competitive. For sure. <laughs> it's, it's almost kind of good that we're doing kind of separate things now so that yeah. we're not in each pair too much. Yeah. And it's, it's cool though to see how like your riding styles are quite dissimilar as well. You know, would you, would you agree with that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's kind of funny that we like always ridden the same stuff, but we ride very yeah. differently. Like He's definitely a lot ballsier than I am as well. But <laughs> Dude, I had to go back and rewatch that front flip from Rampage. Yeah, that was not really. That was... Dude, that's, <laughs> that's huge. Mad respect for anyone who steps up and gives that stuff a go. Like, wow. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was a pretty gnarly moment. I was not sure if he was going to walk away from that one. When, Were you there when too, right? That. Yeah, yeah, I had dug for him that year. So oh, okay. it was like the whole time leading up, he was like, no, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And everybody was talking about it. And then like the night before, he's like, I think I'll do it. <laughs> oh, man. All right. I, I thought he had it, too. Yeah, me like, too. Yeah. Like if anybody could do it, it'd be him. But yeah, it just didn't quite work out. I think it was, it was close, too, man. Like maybe a couple of feet too deep into the landing, but... I don't, I can't. Yeah, yeah, it was like a really short landing yeah. too, so it was a bit of a bit of a snipe for him. But Unfortunately, yeah, that trick just seems like it's so so gnarly. Like you got to get it so perfect. Mm. I, I I was looking at uh, 
your Rampage run actually earlier today. Did you see the, the little subtitle which come up about your relationship with Tom? It's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like hilarious. hyper competitive. Hyper competitiveness <laughs> fueled by high octane sibling rivalry. Dude. That had me. That, I was like, if Red Bull have done that as a bit of a joke, like tongue in cheek, that's genius. That's so good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is, is that pretty, pretty accurate, true. though? <laughs> yeah, yeah, very accurate for sure. Yeah. Not so much at that event, I guess. Like, no, no. It was like, yeah, I don't know. We're like trying to just make sure that we're both making a down safe of yeah. that one, I guess. Yeah. So yeah. It's a bit different. I'll come back. I want to come back to the rep, the rampage stuff actually in a little while, if that's okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just going back a little bit though, man, about like the, you know, your amateur world cup racing stuff. Um, I, I noticed that like some of your entries are like quite, sp- what's the word sporadic. They're like all over, like one's here, one's there. Was the, was mm-hmm. it just like funding, which meant you couldn't go and race like a complete series or was there other stuff going on? Yeah, no, pretty much. Like, um, I guess I would try and pick like the ones that were close to each other. So I'd usually do like Leo gang and Fort William Got and it. then, uh, St. Anne cause it was close. And yeah. then I think one year I did, yeah, half yell and Leo gang cause they were close together. Um, so yeah, I'd just try and make it so that I didn't have to go to Europe to do one race pretty much. Yeah. Um, and spend cool. a bunch of money. Um, yeah, that stuff's expensive, so, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's not cheap. No. And, you gotta been, like work on your own bike. It's been cool having this podcast though, and getting to chat to people and like hearing about how they came up through the ranks, almost you know, and th- yeah, the the grind of it and the the expense of it and all that sort of stuff. It sounds like you were pretty lucky with like your family have been behind you the whole time too. So you've you've had those yeah yeah they're out. so so supportive. It's been like I don't think I would have been able to do it if they weren't down with, right with us doing this. Yeah. Like there's so many people that you talk to and they're like, yeah, my parents hate hate me doing this. There but, is man, there is. That's, it, yeah, you see it growing up, don't you? You know, you, yeah, the parents just aren't interested in what your kids are doing, but it, it goes such a long way when they are. Mm-hmm, for sure, yeah. No, we've been so lucky with that. Like, both our parents are, like, super stoked on what we're doing. And um, my mom grew up with my grandpa racing, so she kind of knows what goes into it a little bit as well. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> um, and then, yeah, my dad, like, I'm always so surprised with my dad. Like, he's he's an orthodontist so obviously he went to school and all that yeah. and for him to be down with us not going to school and going that route has always been quite surprising to me so yeah definitely yeah, definitely pretty stoked that they're not too uh too honest with that stuff <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like it's working out dude so yeah mm-hmm. i think there's probably a lot of I, I know like you see it a lot in in other sports where kids you know drop out of school get homeschooled and stuff or or sometimes not even homeschooled and then end up with you know an injury and then nothing so yeah yeah i know that'd be so gnarly that's pretty scary so yeah Hmm. so did you was there a point when you went from being amateur to professional downhill racer um yeah i guess it kind of just went slowly like it wasn't like i just got signed and like i had everything taken care of like it was more like um i just got like a little bit compensated here and there Mm -hmm. to like oh like i might be breaking even now and like it just kind of went slowly like that um i did but i don't really think that the de- like the world cup racing was ever that turning point necessarily like i kind of just noticed like um going to all these world cups but my sponsors are pretty much just interested in all the videos that i'm doing right so then i was like well <clears throat> i should probably just focus on those videos yeah and then once i started doing that i started doing way better at all the races for some reason i oh, really <laughs> So, yeah, like, I I was like, oh, I should just do, like, just focus on the videos and I'll just do the races for fun kind of thing. And then, yeah, then I just, for some reason, did way better at the races. Just, I guess, less pressure that I put on myself. And, okay. um, but I still always kind of kept training as well. So I guess that never, that part never really went away. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, you've kept your speed, which is pretty sick. <laughs> um, Trying to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> has there been like a favorite edit you've done so far then so like i wanted to talk about this actually because i watched straight forward earlier which mm-hmm. is the most recent one is that right yeah okay, yeah so straight yeah. forward uh it's a deity deity i can i never know which one it is i think deity is yeah, that right the, deity, deity I think, yeah sorry. <laughs> it depends yeah. where you are in the world i don't know <laughs> deity. yeah i guess so um that edit was awesome man so how, how like 
tell me about the concept. Like, how does the, the idea for that come around? Are you quite a creative person? And can you come up with that stuff? Or is there other people involved with, with yeah. bits like that? Um, I pretty much have come up with most of the ideas. I, I like to brainstorm and just think of random stuff. So, um, yeah, I think my favorite one was I did like one that was called Dream Solemn. Yeah. Um, like last year, two years ago. Um, that one's like my favorite one that has come out so far. Okay. <clears throat> um, just because that was like the first time I kind of got to do like a custom build with a machine and like mm -hmm. it was like good funding for it. And we had a good crew working on that one. Um, so yeah, that one turned out really sweet. Yeah. Um, and like then say, straightforward's so sick. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I was pretty stoked on how that one came out. Thank you. <laughs> it's all right, man. It's okay. If anyone out there hasn't seen it, there'll be a link in the show description for straightforward. Sweet, sweet. God's sake, yeah, watch no, that, that one. and go ride your bike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one was crazy. It took a couple of tries to get get some of those shots. Like, right. Because there were such long shots. It was like so many little technical things that you had to get in there. Um, that first shot probably took me like 40 tries or Really? Something. There's like a, a yeah. hot manual in? Is, is it that one? Yeah, yeah. It was like you'd like hop into a manual yeah. and then, yeah, there's like just a couple of things that were like, really hard to like I would get one of the things and then not get the other or like okay. I get it and we wouldn't have the shot or like there would always be something wrong it seemed like but yeah mm. that would that only made the, the end result more like I don't know it just makes it feel better when you're trying for it really hard I guess yeah definitely no it came out sick so good uh, yeah I, I'll be honest I'd not seen that one for I watched it when it first came out which wasn't that long ago I know but the problem is there's so much content these days. Do you find it's mm -hmm. it's hard to to do something different or not? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because it's like you can just do like Instagram videos or whatever. Yeah. But to make something that's like actually noteworthy is pretty pretty tricky nowadays, I guess. Yeah. And it's weird um, to see like the emergence of like full films coming like feature length films coming back and they're like my buddy joe from steel city media is working on his mm -hmm. new film called gamble and obviously he had like death grip come out and a few other ones mm -hmm. it's cool to see that happening again and personally i i'm well into that stuff you know i'd love to see yeah, a yeah good too, sure. high budget like feature film almost you know um, yeah and it's it is hard it's, it's weird because like something will go on like i don't know the front page of pink pie for example and it can be on there for less than 24 hours sometimes you know yeah yeah definitely yeah there's like so much stuff coming out constantly mm. that it's definitely not easy to make something that's really like stands out i guess so. yeah yeah and obviously that's going to be what sponsors are looking for and stuff like that so is that something mm -hmm. that you're always always thinking about always trying to do something which people are like shit like wow <laughs> yeah yeah that's definitely always the goal um mm. i guess yeah it's just cool too to like make something that's unique and um kind of try and get creative with it yeah and like because like if you're yeah if you're just filming the same thing over and over again then it's kind of becomes boring for the rider too so oh yeah for sure for uh, sure yeah just trying to think of different stuff is always kind of what i'm trying to do i guess yeah do you have anything uh noteworthy in the in the pipeline which is coming out pretty soon or anything like that um nothing too soon um filming when I'm, I get back home and then I'm trying to do some, some filming stuff here, but I'm not really too, <laughs> too sure. It's always comes up super last minute. It's like, right. it's funny cause it's always hard to tell sponsors like, uh, like what do you have planned? Like, oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> something will come up. Sure, some, yeah. Sure, something will come up, but, um, yeah, no, that's kind of, it usually kind of happens yeah. last minute yeah. almost. And then, uh, yeah, nothing, nothing too, uh, too crazy coming up. Okay too soon but hopefully uh hopefully some stuff will come up again <laughs> yeah. oh yeah no doubt no doubt man it always comes up um rampage it's pretty rare you get to speak to someone who's ridden rampage let's be honest it, you know unless you're in the click or or whatever or some miraculous reason you have a podcast where someone's on and that they've ridden <laughs> rampage <laughs> so uh yeah you've done rampage twice now mm -hmm. um I mean, shit, dude, tell me about Rampage. I want to know about Rampage and, and the, the, the struggles and all that sort of stuff which goes into making that thing happen for you as a rider. Yeah, it's definitely, it's gnarly. Like, it's probably the, the hardest week of work you'll ever put in on, like, any job. Um, 
and then it's it's funny like the first time I did it I kind of didn't go in with any expectations and I was like well I'm just going there to have fun and yeah. ride and whatever and then that's when they still had qualifying I was like so stoked to make it into the finals yeah. obviously um and then this year or last year um I kind of came in wanting to do better and I don't know if that was like the best way to go into rampage like okay. I feel like you kind of want to just come in and not have any expectations yeah um and you're a wild card too because it was yeah uh, Dorflin that dropped out he went off fighting fires yeah. um yeah and you got the call up um yeah what I don't know man like what goes through your head when you get that call is it like is it stoke or is it like shit yeah <laughs> it's yeah be I, was scary. Pretty, <laughs> I was pretty damn stoked right. um yeah it's like it is such a cool event how you kind of get to like you can do whatever you want like you can build whatever line you think is cool and you can kind of show people what you think is cool to ride on a bike yeah which i think is the coolest part you can really express the way you want to ride on in a contest which is like obviously the only one that you can do that way yeah i mean um, your 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 sort of would you call, god i don't know what the name is, is it a course i don't know uh your line i guess was, mm-hmm. was sick too there was that blind step down hit which you put in which was rad there's like i remember um cam mccall like the commentators are saying how you're the only guy who's put like rollers in which is like so <laughs> sort of like of your riding style too you know yeah, um, yeah. I was like stoked to try and yeah, make it my own, I guess. Yeah. Um it like I didn't really get that great of a result, which like I I totally thought that I deserved that ranking or whatever, but Okay. Um it was definitely more to I don't know, please myself than please the judges, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which, for sure. Yeah. For sure. I don't know, it was cool. It was it was fun to be a part of for sure. It's like crazy to be a part of such a big event too. Like it's, it gets so much publicity that event and like so many people from all, all over the industry are there and yeah, it's pretty, pretty sweet. Oh, it's for sure becoming like the Super Bowl almost of mountain biking. If you ask me, you know, everyone sort of gathers mm-hmm. around. We had like a rampage party around here at my house too. And <laughs> yeah, oh, that's rad. it's good. It is. It's good. It's, it's a cool thing for the sport. I think, I don't know. Are they, do you think it'll carry on for a lot longer? Are they going to switch it out, move somewhere else? Do you know? Do, do you have any like inside mm, info I, on that? I don't really know too much. I heard that they're going to have it at the same venue again, maybe. But right. I don't know. That Those might just be rumors. Um, but hopefully they switch it around a bit. Yeah. And at least, like, Virgin is really good for all the digging and all the lines and stuff. So mm. I'm, I'm assuming it'll stay there. But, um, yeah. Fresh zones are always are, are always very welcome for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited, man. Do you know when do you find out if you get the call up for the next year? Um, I think it's like August. Is it August? Oh, something? Got a little wait yeah. then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. So, yeah, just gotta. I don't know. Do like I I always think that I'm gonna do like big mountain videos, but they always end up being like slope bike or trail bike video so yeah. those don't really help I guess, but. Yeah. <laughs> fair enough man fair enough um so like looking at your year last year was there a like a defining moment i know you had a an awesome uh result at crank works uh dh did you win that is that right uh was that, that was two years, two years ago two years ago okay, um, sorry yeah yeah that was definitely super sweet um i think last year I got second at Slalom yeah. at Crankworks, and then, I don't know, I just had a lot of fun riding my bike all year and doing videos and stuff okay. more, um, and I went to Loose Fest, which was probably like oh, a yeah. personal highlight. That really? was super fun. Yeah, those jumps were so good. Which like, one did you do? Um, the one in Belgium, okay. the Nico Vink one. Nice. Yeah, those jumps were so good. Like, I've never ridden anything like that, so um, I'd say that was probably... As far as having fun riding, that was probably my highlight yeah. of the year. Okay. Yeah, man. I'd like. I really want to go check one of those out. Actually, a, f- a friend of mine rode that one too. Craig, Craig Evans, and and. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think Josh did you rat, rat, ride ride that one too. Obviously, they were together. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it was that one that they went to. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I remember chatting to Craig about that. It was 
he was stoked to like just to make it over those things and like get home safe. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, then... it's so crazy showing up and seeing those things and being like, oh, I gotta jump those on a mountain bike. <laughs> it's, it's pretty wild for sure. Yeah, <laughs> you got plans to do those again this year? Yeah, 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 I'd love to, love to go back there. Okay. Um, yeah, that place is so cool. It's like so much fun riding, other than those jumps around as well. So, yeah, definitely hoping to go back there. Sick. Hope you get it, man. That'd be cool. That'd be really cool. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to ask you about Hyper too. Um, yeah, I know, crazy one, but like a bunch of people reached out and asked, like, can you even buy a Hyper bike, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, how long have you right, been? Right. How long have you been on Hyper now? Uh, this will be my third year being third on them. Okay. Um, yeah, it was just kind of like a crazy opportunity that came up and it's kind of like a cool thing to start from scratch. Like, I mean, they had zinc like a couple of years ago they and did, then they yeah. kind of went away again. Yeah. Um, so they had the bikes that they designed with him and then, um, so we kind of went off of those and now like trying to make it into what bikes are like now i guess yeah okay <laughs> like yeah. So are, are you helping so, quite a bit then are you with like research and you know developing a bike basically yeah yeah like i uh, my bikes are pretty much exactly what i like them to be so that's okay. a really cool thing yeah. um and then eric carter is working there now so he's like helping a lot with all that kind of stuff right um and then yeah we're just kind of like tweaking right now and then i think next year the downhill and trail bikes and stuff should be should be available wow and then they have like their hard tail that's for sale now so. yeah I, I saw that on the website and they've got a good rep in uh bmx too uh yeah a, exactly. a bunch of people ride them over here in the uk um but i yeah randomly just didn't put two the two companies together like i see a lot of hyper bmx um mm. I, yeah i don't know why i just didn't like link the two things up um yeah it's yeah. cool to see they've obviously got a decent amount of traction in that market so if they can do something similar in mountain bike you know it should be, should be pretty good yeah yeah no i'm pretty stoked on their bike right now like um it's pretty much exactly what i would want it to be and then their slope bike's really good too so yeah yeah, yeah. it's pretty i like wasn't sure about it at first because it was like obviously i don't know they don't have a bike yet and all that stuff but i'm pretty damn stoked i i made that decision like it's cool cool thing to be a part of right now yeah for sure yeah cool man so um so it sounds like you don't really have much of an off season is that correct is it like a bit of not yeah, season chasing like yeah some of there some of there <laughs> yeah yeah pretty much i kind of tried to take some time off the mountain bike after a rampage to just kind of i don't know i rode some moto and all that stuff right. um but i don't know it's hard for me to <laughs> take too much time off it's it's definitely what I love to do. So, um, yeah, not too much of an off season, that's for sure. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything else then you enjoy doing just to, to relax or, um, I mean, uh, not really. No. <laughs> just uh, moto and ride bikes. <laughs> yeah. I love riding my dirt bike. Um, yeah. It's yeah, good training really. though, right? It's perfect. It's like, it's a good cross. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a great excuse. It's, it's just cross training <laughs> that we're doing. <laughs> not having any fun while we're doing that. <laughs> Ah, oh, dear. Is there a a rider that you look up to for inspiration, right? Like right now or in the past? Like who, who who's your yeah sort of yeah, inspiration? Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know. Like, there's not really one main rider, but um, Ryan Howard is sick. Um, I really like Fairclaw, um, Seminok, Reader. Um, yeah, there's tons of guys that really inspire me on yeah. what I do. I guess. Because um, I feel like you've almost got a bit of your own style there, which is cool. Like it's it's kind of hard to have that as well, I guess. In in this sport, does that make sense? Like right. you're like little steezy styles, just sort of like you. <laughs> that's what <laughs> I. That's how I see it. Anyway, like that. You know, watching like some of your edits, like you know, you said dream slalom and stuff like that. There's, I don't know, I haven't seen anything like that for quite a while myself. Um, yeah, yeah. So, no, so, I definitely try to not like. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I like try not to ride like other people, but mm. at the same time, I'm definitely inspired by what other people do. And I just try and like make it my own if if mm. I try and like copy them or whatever. <laughs> so it's fair enough. Um, yeah. So what inspires you? What have you got any any major inspirations other than mountain biking? 
know, yeah, that's, that's really cliche. Like I'm it. sorry. It's a cliche <laughs> question, dude, but I like it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I really like watching BMX stuff. I, I watch a lot of Chase Hawk videos and oh, right. a lot of like Chris Fox and those guys and then lots of motocross stuff. Um, although that, that stuff is just... I don't know. You just get frustrated if you try and do what those guys are doing, I guess, on a mountain bike. Um, yeah, for sure. Who's your pick but, for uh, 450 Supercross Championship? Oof. That's a tricky one. Oh, yeah. I want to say Anderson, I guess, but that's that's an easy pick because he has a red plate now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, probably Anderson. He's, you think? He's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Him or, like, Roxon could even be... I yeah. feel like Tomac... Tomac will just go on a big winning spree and just fall short again, maybe. I, I think know. that's probably going <laughs> to happen. A few more rounds, and then Tomac will probably win out for eight. But yeah, exactly. still not win the championship because <laughs> Jason Anderson will be in second or third. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That could easily like happen. It. Jason Anderson's my guy. Yeah. I like I like his style, for sure. <laughs> yeah, me too. Actually. I like his style and also just like the attitude, rad too. Like for sure. He's, he's so chilled mm-hmm. about the whole thing, and that's, I, you know, I'm a big Moto fan, man, and like, that's one thing that I noticed on the run up to the up to like A one is everyone seems to like real stress about it and stuff, but he's just like, Yeah, go ride my bike, just have fun with it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think that's it. Yeah, awesome, cool. awesome, like, yeah, way to look at things. He seems like he's super chilled out, literally just living his dream and riding his bike. Yeah. Sounds yeah, like you as well, cool. man, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> you have to yeah, un- untuck that jersey and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, let's do a couple of listener questions, if that's all right, and then we'll uh, yeah, yeah. wrap this bad boy up. Sounds good. It's not been too traumatic, has it? No, no, no. no. <laughs> Are you a podcast fan, actually? That's a... Yeah, yeah, I listen to a couple podcasts. I listened to the one you did with Mike Redding. All right, recently. thank you. Appreciate that's it. That's cool. Thank yeah, um, and then, yeah, I like to just listen to a couple of random ones when I'm driving and flying yeah. and stuff. Yeah, it is cool. Same. I do a lot of driving for work. So, like, within Hook It, I look after a lot of the sales stuff. So, I'm on the road sort mm-hmm. of uh, visiting bike shops and stuff. So, I have a, a hell of a lot of time on my hands just sat in the van. Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'll smash through a few episodes of, like, Joe Rogan or mm. you know, I, I'm into all sorts of stuff. Do I listen to some weird shit, too, that I, w- <laughs> I would never, like, admit to on here? <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm into some weird stuff, but yeah, it seems to work out for me. I'd rather learn. I've always said that. I'd rather be yeah. learning and learning something and like listening to something I'm interested in rather than like, yeah, listen to some shit music, some Justin yeah, Timberlake or sure. something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. A uh, couple of listener questions right now. Uh, okay, so we got uh, at Joe Muss on Instagram. Uh Will your hyper ever be available for the public? I saw you ripping it in Whistler this summer, and it's a thing of pure beauty. If it's already <laughs> available, please ignore my ignorance. Yeah, no, it's not available yet, but it will be soon. Um, yeah, it should be out like within the next year or so, I believe. So, yeah, yeah should Watch be the good. Space Joe Muss um, at Ride Point Five, who actually just won some boxer shots before. Um, what music do you listen to? What gets you stoked to ride the trails? Uh-huh. I'd say Metallica is my favorite. Oh, my God, um, and then it's kind of like metal and rap. <laughs> okay. Kind of, kind of weird combo maybe. But um, yeah, I like listening to Metallica, Motorhead, um, a bit of Slayer, and then pretty down with the new Kendrick Lamar album. Um, I haven't heard that. Apparently that's pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's big. <laughs> is it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody's listening to it, man. <laughs> <laughs> um and then I guess my brother listens to a lot of like underground rap, so I listen to a little bit of that as well. So cool, yeah, very good. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, all right, this is a bit of a regurgitated one, but we'll fire it out anyway. Um, at no, actually, it's not even at. It's on Facebook. Uh, Pierre Francesco Tron, best name ever. Um, <laughs> how were the loose fest jumps, and are you planning on doing any other fest events? Uh, and also. Another one. Are the hyper downhill and enduro frames available yet? <laughs> People yeah. seem to be digging these bikes, dude. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah, um, yeah, no, Loose Fest was sweet. That was like, yeah, my favorite event. So uh hoping to be back there for sure. And uh any other fest events look pretty fun to me too. So 
Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, man. Um, all right, let me just have a quick look. Uh, we got uh, at Let's Get High for twenty. Um, <laughs> that's another classic name. <laughs> There's a bit of a, uh, a thing going on with our listeners. Actually, they've all got hilarious Instagram names. Um, <laughs> da, 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 da. How many pairs of boxers do you go through after hitting rampage lines? <laughs> <laughs> Couple for sure. Couple. That was pretty scary. <laughs> I bet. Funny. All right, man. Um, if if that's cool with you, is there anything you'd like to to promote? Anyone you'd like to thank before we wrap this bad boy up? Yeah. Um, thanks to all my sponsors for uh, making making what I do uh, a job. And yeah. I'm pretty much living my own dream. So that's awesome. Thanks to Hyper, Fox, um, 100%, Shimano, Fox Suspension, uh, Maxis, Tires, Raceface, um, Descent Labs, Skyride, um, Hyper Bikes, obviously. Yeah. Well, I think that's about it. Sorry if I missed anybody. <laughs> <laughs> no diggity. But um, uh, yeah. It's been cool, man. I really appreciate you taking the time out so early in the morning too. Um, good just to sit and have a chat. Like I say, nice and chill, just hanging out, drinking yeah, a cup, of, yeah, thank cup you. of tea with no no milk because I forgot to buy some on the way home. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, thanks a bunch. I really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we get a chance to catch up pretty soon too. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. All right, dude. Have a blast. Have a good day. And we'll, uh, I'll speak to you soon. Sounds good. All right, dude. Thank you. Peace out. All right. Later. See you, man. Bye. Yeah, bye. All right, folks, that's episode number 43. Before we wrap that up, let's do some shout outs here, real quick. First up, we've got at the Aberdare MTB on Instagram. He was the winner of our Christmas, uh, what did we call that? Was it Christmas Camper? Uh, and he wanted to say if anyone who listens to the podcast is riding at Bike Park Wales anytime soon, drop them a follow and a message and they'll uh, they'll hook up and go for a ride together that'd be cool it's nice to see the community building um who else we got let's have a look at matty davies 77 who just wanted to give the podcast a shout out which is cool uh yeah he's also a fan of of joey diaz and and joe rogan too so thanks for that matty really appreciate it (laughs) Um, we got uh, at Alex Evans 13. Um, he wants to give a shout out to all the shredders from Mine Woods. Uh, that's where he lives in Boffa, uh, where Scotty Lachlan rides too. So hopefully that's uh, you guys get to catch up at some point too. This is a cool one actually at Troy Da Vinci on Instagram. So I've seen Troy comment and share and all that sort of stuff and like a bunch of posts but I didn't quite realize what Troy was up to um, so basically Troy um, has created a page uh, which is at Troy Da Vinci it is his, his name but he posts a bunch of stuff uh, about mental health uh, and he actually just started a hashtag which is hashtag mental health riders um, and he's going to be looking to expand that to raise awareness for mental health issues via cycling uh, he's doing a cycle instructor's course pretty soon, he says, uh, and he looks to help to um, to work with children and bring awareness and bike skills um, to those guys and help create a safer next generation. How cool is that? So go follow at Troy Da Vinci, C-R-O-Y-D-E-V-I-N-C-I. Um, what else did we get? Uh, at D-H-B underscore daily. Just wanted to shout out at DHB underscore daily. There you go. You got one. Um, And that's it, folks. Don't forget, any questions, comments, concerns, uh, you can email me. It's podcast at hookitproducts.co.uk. Don't forget to drop us a follow too um, at the Hook It Podcast, Facebook, uh, Instagram at the Hook It Podcast too. Um, And yeah, if you have enjoyed this episode, please tell your mates, give it a share, all that goodness. And that's about it. Have a great rest of your week and we'll see you in another week's time for another episode. And it's going to be massive. Keep an eye out for that one. All right, folks, peace out. Have a great week.